And we're back. That's good to go. Let me know if you guys can hear me okay. I hope uh, everybody's been well. I'm happy to be back, man. We got some something new to test out today. We got some Alpha 6 paints. Uh, <laughs> we got a slightly dirty looking van. Uh, and we're gonna mess around and see uh, what we can do with this. We can flip this with a used looking shoe. Coming in loud and clear, dope. I love to hear that, man, because 50% of the time you guys tell me you can't hear nothing. So, um, welcome back, Customs by Kev. How you doing, man? Rags, Riches, what's good? YouTube in the building, too dark. Okay, let's see how we can flip that real quick. Man, the light. You know what? I had the electrician come back in today because we were having that flickering, and now it's too dark, huh? Hold on, let me see if... I can't make it too bright because then the white's get all washed out too, you know? How's that? Is that better? I think now you guys can see the difference on that sole, right? Can you guys see that? It's almost went from like a, a white to a sail. Let me know if you guys could see that okay. But at the same time, the uppers got messed up in the dyeing process. So we gotta now reverse this step because this is all, well, you guys can see it's all bossed up. So uh, today we're going to test out Alpha 6 paints. I've got a couple of different colors. Both of these were awesome when I actually pulled them out. So I wanted to see how they airbrush. I think it was Sneaky Reeky who asked last time, uh, how do these uh, work in an airbrush? So we'll test that out today. Uh, I've got ivory and I've got light orange. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar, this is a company that's based out in Detroit. Um, this, this actual line I'm using today is Alpha Flex. They've got a bunch of different lines though. That's super bright, yo. Sorry, I got my admin working on the, the lighting for you guys here. Stop messing with the settings. Bro, I didn't touch the settings. All I did was hit go live. So anyways, sorry guys, that's my admin. We, we fight now and again. I usually win, but he just, oh, he will never admit that. All right, so as he's working on the settings real quick, let me move stuff to the side, get things ready to go. How's everybody doing, man? How you guys living? <laughs> Customs by said, good, man. How goes it? That sounds very proper. Rags, you doing solid? Good. Speed infusion, we don't care. Webs, what's up, Webs? How you living, man? Speed infusion is my admin, guys. So if you guys hear me trying to bully him a little bit, it's because... We're childhood uh, acquaintances. The Die Lab in the building was good, Die Lab. We got people from all, all walks of life today, man. We got some people on Twitch, some people on uh, YouTube and Facebook as well. So uh, welcome, welcome back, yo. Um, if you guys just uh, joined, uh, kind of messed up on this first upper testing it. And we're gonna see if we can reverse back the steps. Now, if you see there's a lot of dye stains. Maybe I should just ask the dye lab and just get this over with, huh? <laughs> There's a lot of stains that are, have darkened on this canvas. So I couldn't wash them out. I tried to. And now they look pretty settled in. So this is going to be interesting to see. Um, and, and by the way, this is not a fair way of going about testing the, the, the paint today. Because it's not a clean canvas. But I'm going to see how, because now it's a test shoe. How is it going to uphold on this canvas? Do we got to mix it with uh, softener, which I'm, which I'm going to do today. Actually, where is the softener at? Let me grab the softener. And then this was, if you guys joined us last time, what the results were like with the, the uh, Alpha Flex painted by brush. So they settled in really nice, real solid. Um, if you see any barren spots, you know, it might have been me just missing the layer, but in general, this took about two coats. I could see the color, the vibrancy there. 
laid nice and flat. It was very consistent. So yeah, man, I was I was I'm really impressed so far with the way it hand painted. So um, one of the guys last time, I believe it was Sneaky Ricky, asked, "How does it do airbrushing?" So that got me intrigued. So I'm gonna pull out this GAC 900. I don't know if they have like a, a fabric medium. Uh, I do have this JC, so I'm going to mix this in. Um, this guy has one of those little rattle ball silver things in there, assuming it's silver. So I'm going to go ahead and shake it up. This reminds me of playing craps right here. Seven. Winner. Same thing with the orange. Webs, we're going to find out today. He said, how's the alpha paint? Just finished the pizza. I like that, man. Settled in, right? Now you can just chillax. So let us put the the all white one to the side. I want this to be our before, you know? So definitely don't want overspray on that. And now we got to do a little bit of taping. So let's start a tape up real quick. While I'm doing that, I'd love to hear what you guys are working on. I'm sure you guys got different projects going on too something you guys are proud of all right and uh i think i had that little oh, where's lk's thing at there it is one second guys let me grab this it's gonna make things easier for me to tape up and then it's a better view for you guys too there we go All right, so I mean, I think this is basic, but I'm gonna still go over with you guys because, man, I don't really remember the last time we uh, talked about how to tape. But I always get from a lot of people asking me what kind of tape do I use for certain projects. And when I'm working with rubber, you know, believe it or not, I like to work with just standard masking tape. So I guess I might as well teach you guys because I'm sure it's going to be somebody who's new. So let's say, how do you mask off? So we could just go over that real quick, huh? Let me put this stool up. Oh man, I'm getting old. I'm getting too small for this stool now. All right. So just a standard piece there. But then I always lock it like right at the end, especially when you're airbrushing. You want to really make sure that all of the, the taping that you do is really like tightly woven in wherever you want it to lock in. So like this area here, you really want it locked in. The rest of it, I just kind of let it settle wherever it goes, okay? Work in little you know, small squares. Try to get as extended as possible on it when I can. Sometimes I'm curves a little, little hard. You could see I lay it out like that, and then, then I kind of guide where this should go. And this isn't the only tape. There's people using all kinds of tapes. I just like this one because it locks in tight, quick. It's cheap. And you could reuse it too, so couple of nice benefits behind it looks like I got my head all in the camera sorry guys is that too bright oh can you guys see I feel like that's too bright now huh speed infusion you put the brightness up like on a thousand dog I know you guys you guys be the judge man if you guys think it's a little too bright let him know I'm gonna just run through this real quick try to tape off as quick as I can now this tape off is kind of interesting because that sole goes really like almost to the upper where it's like level with it and most soles aren't really like that they kind of fall off more in the the midline of the shoe. Let 
you'll notice I'll get like smaller pieces so if I miss a spot I can go back in fill it and then drop it down that way it'll just kind of really secure that lock Guys, I'll check the comments in a sec. I just want to get a little bit of a head start here on this because I'm sure you all don't want to see me taping off all day. It's kind of boring. But this will be nice for anybody who's interested in working with vans. Especially if the, the paint lays nice here. Now, I'll be honest with you guys here, you don't have to be perfect because with the razor blade, you can always nick off any extra paint that kind of seeps in, but being accurate is always better, right? Now, I'm just going back because if you get it on the upper, that's where that line's going to be at. See, so for example, if this tape went up just a, like a quarter inch higher, when you peel the whole thing off, you're going to miss that whole quarter inch. You'll see it still be that same color. So really, uh, I kind of aimed it, just tuck it right underneath. I'll keep things nice and clean at the end. Usually that curve is a little bit of a challenge, but once you get to the sides, there's no more bumps and curves, so it gets a little bit easier. See like this right here? That's not going to be fun. I tell you, after some time, you'll get good with taping and it just like becomes a breeze. <laughs> but in the beginning, it, it's frustrating when you get like lines and you feel like you taped them off right. So if that happens to you, don't be discouraged, you know? It's just practice. Mo, thank you so much for liking the stream, homie. Appreciate it. See, I'm coming around this edge. And... Locking it with a, the fingernail there. Nothing complicated, you know what I mean? Let's see, I gotta go up real quick, man. Dang, I know you guys have been probably commenting like crazy. Sorry, guys, let me take a quick two, two minutes just to say what's up, man. I got like right into it today, huh? <laughs> All right, man, so I said what's up uh, to Webs. Webs, what's good, homie? Die Lab, what's good? Patreon fam. Both y'all Patreon fam, what's good? Shevin's in the building, back from Knoxville. Oh, got my daughter for the summer? Nice, man. You should um, check out, um, and I'm not promoting myself, but you should check out our video where me and my daughter painted shoes together. That'd be a great summer project for you guys. Uh, let's see, Dilab, so what's good to webs? That's cool. How opaque is the alpha paint? How many coats do you have to use in order to make it solid? Webs, um, I think I showed you this. The shoe right here. Uh, it took me about two coats to get that to look like nice and solid. And a lot of the colors, um, for example, like the red or like the blues, I noticed that on, on some paint brands, if you're painting them too many times, they get streaky or they get really dark. Like they don't look like the same color that you want it to look like out the bottle, you know. Uh, and I think that's just because of the pigments, the way they dry on it. Uh, it could be grainy or, you know. So yeah, that, that was really uh, impressive that the reds and the blues look good. They're all solid. All the primary colors came out looking nice and solid within a couple of uh, coats. Uh, but you, we'll, we'll test this out today, man. Let's see if we can actually reverse this back out. I'm, I'm interested to see that. Uh, and that'll also show the opacity too. I'm wondering if I should shoot it with just by itself or should I mix it with GAC together? I don't know because it seems, seems real fluid already. What's interesting is they just came out with an airbrush line too. So 
I gotta check that out next. Chaos, what's good, homie? We got Chaos Edits on YouTube. I'm good, man. Hopefully everything's good with you. Raining. Oh wait, what's good, man? I know what, what happened, bro. You just switched up from a Twitch over to YouTube. Moises, what's good, homie? I'm good, man. Dad. What's up, big guy? How you doing? <laughs> come on, you might as well come here and say hi. <laughs> this is my little one. Look, look in the camera right there. You see? Is that you right there? Say hi. Hi. <laughs> you ready to go, okay? I'm not done yet. Okay. Don't wipe my ass off in the front of the camera, dude. He didn't mean that. Okay, say bye. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> go, go to mama. Yo, dude. All right. Well, the little one might be in the background for those big guys. <laughs> the unex, the unex, unexpected guests in the building. <laughs> oh, we got the usher to to bounce this fool out of here. <laughs> oh man. Let me see what else we got going on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Mike, what's good, man? Thank you so much for following on me. <laughs> Was that the reason you just followed, man? <laughs> Usually it's not that entertaining here. That's why. From Malaysia. Dude, Malaysia is awesome. Uh, I, I visited there for a couple of hours for a flight over to India, man. And Malaysia was amazing. How is it over there now? I wish I had more time at, uh, when I was in Malaysia, man. That would have been awesome. Oh, gotcha. You watch on YouTube and chat here. Interesting. Okay, is there a reason behind that? That sounds like it would be more difficult. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Algorithm. I'm, I'm, oh, Algorithm. That's pretty dope. I like that. Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about the cause for us. <laughs> What's good, Sneaky Ricky? Hey, man, were you the one who was asking about uh, how does this go through in an airbrush last time? I believe it was you, right? I don't know if you heard me earlier, but I mentioned you earlier. What's good, Patreon fam? Chris Beiser in the building. What's good, homie? Coming from Facebook. <laughs> you guys saw the... Sup, little man? <laughs> Oh man, well, now you guys know that um, I don't have a made-up family. I actually have a real family. All right, let me let me catch up on the, the tape job here real quick. I just want to make sure I'm somewhat caught up because then I, otherwise I just go like, have to go way back and then I'm answering questions and they're, and y'all answered them already. So, all right, this side it's going to be a lot easier. It's just one straight path. So, by the way, laying it down like this and looking at it at an angle for me just I guess I got kind of used to it you see how I'm holding this up I'm holding this side up and I'm just letting the the nail press down exactly where I wanted to tape so yeah for those of you guys that are get good at um, doing these tape jobs man you can do those unveilings with the midsoles too what do they call that when it's like satisfying to watch, right? All right, so I got that pretty much done. All right, cool. And let's just lock this in. Same thing that I said. It's going around a curve. Just really wanted to reach exactly where that sole meets that upper and not anywhere further off or closer in like try to get as exact as possible that'll assure you that you don't have to clean up afterwards but you know for me at the end of the day I always clean up no matter what this is going to be a leak there's going to be some kind of a you know residue stain whatever it is you're going to have to clean up but you know the more you minimize any errors here the less you're going to have to clean up later on so for me that's a big deal and I just that's that, that taught me like yo just take the time to tape up and I learned that when uh, I used to work at a body shop and they showed me like how important it was when they're doing anything like for example if you're pinstriping on a car or if you're just masking up a door jam there's so many different spots that you need to mask off on auto body that you know it's it, it you know you only get one shot basically at it 
And if you've got a bad tape job, you're gonna see all that, all the flaws. All right, I think that's pretty good, you know? Got that kind of knocked out. All right, so this is the plan, guys. I'm gonna do the upper here. I'm gonna do the upper in the orange, and we're gonna do that like little, uh, the ivory. We're gonna do that right here on this little stitch. I haven't, or I don't know what you wanna call that, swoosh, stitch, logo, design. It's just a little leather piece. Um, I do think I should grab some adhesion promoter though. Where did that adhesion promoter go? All right, I gotta look for it because you guys see these, um, the lace holes? They're made out of like a plastic. So whenever you have a plastic, what you wanna do is scuff them down with a little bit of, uh, where is this? Uh, some, like a wet sandpaper, something real thin. This is like probably a thousand grit. Let's see if it shows. Oh, 320, okay, 320, <laughs> 1,000, 320, that's a big difference, right? Yeah, but anything like 1,000, 320, something that won't scratch and leave marks on, on the actual um, lace holes. You just want it to have a little scuff so the paint catches on it, and then you wanna use like a, a adhesion promoter. So I'll find that right now. I believe it's right here, give me a sec. Here. here we go, so I'm gonna need a little adhesion promoter today and that's gonna be just to it's almost like glue for the paint you know it's gonna help it stick a little bit better we need that because when people lace up their shoes there's gonna be a lot of a movement in the in the sections a lot of wear and tear and so you know you can only do so much to keep them looking nice and solid but you know if somebody's aggressive with tying shoes it could still chip you know uh, but we're going to try our best to keep it, you know, looking the way it does. All right. So let's uh, start by, well, first thing I think I, we should do is try to reverse some of the darker spots. You all see all the darker spots. All right. So let's start with that. Um, I do want to see what the tongue looks like. The tongue, see that? Big old stain on the tongue. I want to try to keep this clean. Okay. So let's uh, grab a paper towel. That'll absorb any mess. Try to keep it looking stock. How's that? That looks good, right? It's perfect. Cool. Now, I can't just leave it like that, so let's leave, put a little tape. And that way it'll just lock that little napkin in there. Otherwise, when you uh, use the airbrush, it's going to blow it every which way, right? Again, this is just for testing today, guys. So, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. I have no clue. This is my first time, like, really working with this stuff. Hopefully, we get a nice result out of it. But if not, you know, I'm not even using the right paint, technically, if they've got uh, airbrush paint out. All right, that looks cool. And then just this back end, you see the... I've got a... Oh, you don't see nothing there because that's in the way. I've got a little pocket that's open. That messes with me all the time. I, I forget to like mask the whole thing off. So it's really important that when you're masking things off, you don't miss something like that. That's really easy to miss. You know, it's camouflaged. So even if I put something, I'm not gonna put a dirty napkin in there, but another napkin in there that's kind of balled up just to protect it, you're good. See? So we got the good majority of the inside. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spray the ivory. So let's start with that. I'm going to move the stuff that I don't really need out of the way. Might have to clean this out real quick, yo. Yeah, ding. Ding, 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 ding. Hey, when I do that. All right, let's let, I'm going to go ahead and let that kind of settle in. Sorry, guys. I should have had that already ready to go. You know what? Let me see if I can get another one out. I think this might be good. Sick. Okay, cool. We should be good with this one, too. All right, y'all. Let me just... Uh, 
I always lose this mouse. I want to put it somewhere where I could remember where it's at. All right. <laughs> That's crazy, Webs. Yeah, he said, I wonder how good the regular Alpha Paint runs through a Grex airbrush. Yeah, you read my mind, dude. <laughs> we're, we're literally about to find out right now, okay? That's nuts. Great minds think alike, huh? Except mine was an accident. <laughs> I would have used a water, but it was dirty, right? All right, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's running through nice and clean. All right, y'all. Should I do this with the GAC 900? Should I not? Let me tell you guys the differences between the two, okay? So, why do we use GAC 900 when we could just use paint? Like, what's the whole catch behind that? Let's talk about that first. A lot of these paints, if they need a cover, they've got to have enough mixture and pigments to cover whatever surface. For example, today we we're trying to cover this stuff up, right? It needs to have a certain amount of pigment. And what happens is if you spray too much of it, onto a canvas material like this, what's going to end up happening is you're going to get it to look like this cakey look and you won't see the texture of the canvas anymore. And that's not what you want. You want it to look nice and natural when it's when it's all, you know, cleaned up and when it's when the custom is complete. Like so for example, like here on the toe box, you don't want to see a bunch of caked area here because I had to cover this dye area. And you know nobody knew that, but I I know that I have to cover that area with something lighter so I can get to an orange color that's nice and consistent with the whole project when it's done. All right, we use GAC because this waters down the paint; it seeps into the fabric rather than caking on top of the fabric. All right, if the paint's too thick, instead of it going in and getting into the fiber fibers and looking natural. What it's going to do is just kind of lay on top, lay on top, and then you're going to lose the texture altogether of this shoe. All right? So that's what it does. It's like more of a watered down effect for fabrics. Um, it even says here, fabric painting medium. So that's exactly what that does. All right? So if you're new to the game and you, you don't understand why do we even start with that, we're starting with that because we want it to kind of seep into the fabric rather than lay on top of it. Got it? All right, so I've got that covered up. Now, let's talk a little bit about these little plastic things. They're hard. We're gonna spray some water down paint on that. What do you think is gonna happen? Because we're watering down the paint, whenever you spray on plastic, it just kind of drizzles on top of it and it's never nice and consistent. You need something that'll lay on top of here that's going to like bond onto the plastic. So GAC also has a GAC 200. This one is a promote uh, promotes adhesion and film hardness, promoting fil uh, the adhesion on plastic and things that are hard. You use GAC 200. For canvas, you use the paint with GAC 900. All right. So if you wanted to do like T-shirts. GAC 900 because it's a fabric, okay? If you wanted to do somebody's sunglasses, got a plastic frame, GAC 200 because it's a plastic, it's a hard material. So just to kind of break this all down from the beginning, I think this is a good way to kind of introduce everything we're working with, all right? So with that said, let me uh, see, let's test out just the paint by itself, all right? Since I'm going to do it just by itself, I got to remember not to spray too much because it's going to just like cause this big like puddle of paint and when it dries, it's going to dry like almost glossy. It's not going to look good. Okay. So the name of this game right now is just being patient and laying out light coats. Oh, <laughs> I should probably open the, the cap off. <laughs> that might be smart, right? <laughs> All right, let me put this to the side before I drop it. Because I guarantee I'll drop that. And let's get something that'll pick this up for me. All right, y'all. Ow. 
That hurt. I gotta like hold it <laughs> so it doesn't just flick up and all over the shoe. So I'm trying to be just consistent. Give me a sec, guys. And this is exactly why I don't wear like my nice stuff. Cause something like this right here would pop in my face <laughs> and all over my like nice jersey. All right. That's the one thing that I'm very good at is being clumsy. All right, cool. Let's give it one more shake. Oh my bad, y'all. This light is all up in the way, huh? Hopefully, is that a little bit better? Let me know if the lighting is too much or too little, guys. All right. I lower the brightness a little bit so you guys could see the the contrast here. Okay. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine? Nine sounds like a great number. Let's do nine drops of Alpha Flex Ivory, okay? This is just the paint by itself going in a Grex airbrush, okay? Uh, I'm gonna start by aiming for just that front area. Why not, right? <laughs> it's, it's pretty stained. And what I'm gonna do is uh, pull this trigger back super gently because um, this Grex airbrush is super powerful like it kicks out paint with no problem and so um, when I detail I got to be real careful with pulling this trigger back all right so just a word of advice for your airbrush shop in here let's make sure that it's nice and clean you don't want any like hairs or anything on there I see one little let's see if I got a tweezer if we could just tweeze this off any kind of fibers, anything you see that's on there, you want to take it off first, you know, just, you don't want to trap that kind of stuff on the canvas. It's already bad enough, I got to fix a stain, so. All right, let's try this out. Where is? That's reason it's here. All right, so again, guys, I'm gonna try to paint this. At the end, it should be this orange, okay? So what I'm trying to do is just get this light enough, this stain light enough, so this orange should be able to cover it. Now, the way I painted with this stuff, with, in, with the paint brushes, I think I could just maybe just paint this straight up, but I do wanna see if it can cover the stain a little bit. So, you know, just to mess around and see. Can't hurt, right? Real soft. And by the way, this is an ivory and the shoe was white. So it should be turning more of an ivory, kind of a sail. You know, an off-white color is what we really want it to be at the end. That seems like it's good enough. I'm gonna give that a moment to just kind of settle out and dry, guys. Oh man, crazy, Sneaky Ricky, congratulations, man. <laughs> that is crazy, You're, are you in the hospital right now, man? Congratulations, man, that's, that's great news, man. That's just uh, a miracle waiting to happen for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny man that's i i'm really appreciate you for watching dude i hope uh 
I hope you're not nervous or anxious or anything, man. Just let everything come to you natural, right? All right, now I gotta move some stuff. This is like really crowded. All right, but I wanna make sure you guys could see. So I'm gonna go for this guy here next, okay? I haven't uh, prepped this little leather strip. So let's grab, let's grab a couple of uh, Q-tips just to knock this out real quick. Oh, this had red on it. Why? Why did you do that? That sucks. I got a dirty Q-tip there. All right, let's clean that off. That was not a good look. Snuck in the clean pile. So before you paint this leather, I'm just putting a little bit of acetone on this Q-tip and it's just cleaning that leather up, taking that clear coat off of it. There's a clear coat on it, you know? We want to get past that clear coat and get to that natural leather. So we got that side done. So you know there's another side, right? So just knock it out real quick. And was this the one that? Oh no, that was that that one there. Crazy. I have a like a dirty pile of Q-tips and a clean pile. One's for airbrushes and one's for this kind of stuff. Well, that's good. At least we can knock this out as that front's kind of drying out a little bit. Note how long we're waiting for this to dry, by the way. Probably like, what, two minutes in? There we go. Let's take a look at how that front looks now. So it still has a stain right there. All right, let's go ahead and jump on to the next section there real quick. I kind of like that we use the, the Grex because the Grex airbrush does a great job like covering panels. Like I said, it's super strong. So if I need to sweep through and get it done, this is like my go-to here. For example, if you're doing a whole line. Just staying consistent with the flow, keeping the trigger at the same speed. Everything should be the same. As I'm pulling my trigger back, it's back and forth, back and forth, so then that way it's not spraying a bunch on it, you know? Let's try to get into just the nooks here. If I feel like I oversprayed, I'll just take a Q-tip and just kind of wipe it down a little bit. Let's show you guys what that looks like. Is that too bright for you guys? Let me know. Over here, it's super bright. It's like hard to tell. Huh. Oh, Webs, I just saw your, your comment here. It said, just try to use my AlphaSex discount code they gave me for the first time, and it didn't work. Uh, I guess I should have started using it when they first gave it to me. Um, man, I totally forgot. Here, let me send you guys a link. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that, dude. I've got a, a link, and I've got a discount code for them, too. 
So then that way, uh, if you guys need this paint, there you go in the discount code. Um, I'll, just sit, I'll just put use discount code. I'm glad you mentioned that, dude. Man, I'm so uh, into doing the custom. I forget this kind of stuff. Use discount code feel good. There you go. Cool. Try that out, Webs. Hopefully that'll work out for you, man. Because uh, some people were telling me like, oh, you know, the paint's more expensive, but you get more paint. <laughs> so it kind of, it evens out, right? Like if you're getting more paint. And then also, uh, the other thing too is it coats. You have to use it for less coats. So then it's, you know, you may have five ounces, but it might be like six ounces of something else, you know, because of the fact that it coats pretty heavily. So let's, uh, I'm going to just keep going into it. Uh, again, I got to be real tight when I get into these uh, lace holes here because I don't want to really get on the plastic. There we go. See, it's really easy to overshoot right there. And when you overshoot it, what's going to happen is you got a, like a pile of paint, you know, that builds up as, as you get really close. Oh, Bell said it won't dry glossy. Okay, dope. Well, that's that's good. That's great news. Thank you for that. Bell, have you uh, used this quite a bit? Because I'm, I'm still getting accustomed to it. So any feedback is great. I'm going to hit that, that back heel cap there now, okay? This first coat, I'm really aiming for anything that's kind of darkened, and I'm trying to kill that that the dirty coats down, lighten them up a little bit. So if you guys see me putting a little bit of emphasis on the dirty blotch spots that I need to get lighter, this is why. <laughs> it's because I want to try to get them light enough where the whole shoe looks to be one even color. That's the end goal. Okay, I'm out here. That was about nine drops. So that was like covered pretty much um, the side of the shoe and the front toe cap. Let's go. Cool. I like that it has this little thing like the squeeze bottle too because in that way it kind of it doesn't uh, just <laughs> jump into my airbrush. I've seen like I've just casually poured it in, and then a bunch dumps in, and I'm like, dude, I know I'm not going to use that much. So nice to have that little control there. All right, let's say I'm going to just swing through and do the rest, guys, because I, I want to get to the actual orange part. Um, I need to just tape this off. Miss that spot. Really easy to miss spots, so. There we go. Cool. Knock that out.
Sorry guys, I just want to get that knocked out there. Whew, okay, sorry, I just got in this zone. Let me just knock this thing out. All right, so you guys could see that. That side's pretty much an even um, ivory. I want to say yellow, but it's, it is a yellowish ivory, I guess you could say. Oops, what did I do there? It's something. Please go away. <laughs> sorry guys, I hit something or, there we go. This side got a couple of spots on it still. See, this is a spot here. It's so hard for me to tell if you guys could see that or not. Man, Webs, I just saw you say GAC the first couple of layers. I was thinking the same thing too. Okay, so let, let me uh, jump. I think I'm going to jump into one more layer, but I think I'm going to take Webbs' advice, okay? And so I will use some GAC on this next run. Uh, and the reason why is I don't want the texture to start to really build up and get like furry or fuzzy. You want to try to keep the texture looking as, you know, as, as uh, much canvas as possible. So uh, if, you, if you haven't really taken a look at canvas, it has basically like a cross stitch and they're super tight and super woven to the point where if you really look at it, you can see it. Otherwise, it's it's hard to miss, okay? Uh, other things about the airbrush, you can see here, I'm missing a lot of uh, just corners. You see the corners here? And the reason why is because the, the van is bowing in like this. So you're missing those sections. So as we get to this next uh, round, you really want to get this GAC to seep in a little bit and get in all the edges, okay? That's gonna keep a nice consistent uh, shoe. Because for example, let's say you left it this way and then the person ties their shoe super tight, then what's gonna happen with this? It's gonna really pull in, right? And when that pull in, it uh, will expose all of that missing piece. So really trying to get the whole shoe as close as possible is a good idea, right? To get it to look consistent and factory. So uh, let me drop a little bit of GAC in there. Now, if I drop GAC in there, I got to remember that then I cannot uh, use that GAC mixture and paint these lace holes, okay? I'm going to have to do a whole different paint and GAC 200 combo to do that. So um, let's go ahead and drop a little bit of GAC in. Um, I see that this is pretty much done anyway, so I guess that's a good cue to, to, to jump in. Um, let me just see if I can lay this out a little bit more. I don't want to get it too heavy again, guys. Every time I I coat this guy too, I just really want to take a close look and see if I can negate any errors here. Anything that starts to build up like fuzzies or hairballs or hair, just anything lint, you want to try to keep it clean. All right, I think that's good. All right, so maybe I'll just put a little bit of GAC. I'm not going to waste a lot of paint. So what I'll do is I'll just, you know, three drops, four drops of both. All right, so let's do that. One, two, three, and four. Maybe that might not be enough. Let's do five. Five. All right. And now GAC 900. Okay. This is going to water down. It's going to water down this paint. And so when it waters it down, it should kind of seep into the actual van. And you want that, you know, you want it to kind of be one with the actual shoe, right? Rather than it sitting on the top of it. You want it to like immerse into the actual fabric and fibers. So that's what's important about this GAC. It kind of helps the bond between the two. Now, if you guys use GAC 900, you also need to know that you need to heat set it for it to get its natural softness back. So it'll get a little bit like spongy feeling almost like wet laundry 
and if you want to retain that like natural softness again you have to use a heat gun at a certain temperature i believe it's you know don't quote me on this you got to read oh you know what i have the jc bottle <laughs> i said don't quote me you can quote me because it's right here uh where'd it go it was is this it 200 i gotta sweep this whole thing 900 here it goes yeah it is okay cool yeah like i said quote me on it i'm positive <laughs> three to five minutes medium heat or heat press one to two minutes at 300 or you could even drop it in the dryer that's for for clothing you know if you're trying to dye clothing so yeah all right man let me uh see we mix that up a little bit let's get this layer going now i'm gonna try to get the whole panel the whole panel we're trying to get it to be nice and consistent okay we got the stains we kind of blocked them off Now I want to try to get as solid of a color as I can here in the ivory without like overdoing it. I always leave like a layer or two for the stitching sections as well. We tend to neglect those. Alright, so that's the front. All right, so now I'm going to do the side here. I'm going to try to avoid hitting this leather strip. It's not going to really hurt it, but it's like a watered-down version of paint. Getting inside of these little nooks and crannies, okay? Let me show you guys what you need to do here. And now that I did that, I, I realized I forgot the whole tongue. <laughs> you want to push this out. See this? That way you can get all of these sections here that you missed. Anytime you push a panel out, you're going to see the true assembly of the whole panel rather than it kind of caving in on you there, okay? All right, Webs, I should have listened to you. I think that, that, that feels a lot more smoother. Davidito, what's good, homie? Welcome back, homie. How's the, how's the footage coming along? All right, let me get this back here. This is about the time where I know I've layered these lace loops a lot with paint. It's just, you know, the overspray. I'm going to lay a little bit of that adhesion promoter on them. See, that'll help. Almost like to activate the glue for this the plastic sections here. It's, it's getting ready to, whatever it's going to get on it, it's going to be sticky, right? We've got to knock this. That's a bad stain, man. I, I hope this is going to come out. It's, uh, let's see. This is with GAC. So I guess it's kind of good that I forgot about the tongue because we could test both ways. I have a feeling it might not come out as well here with the stain. But you know what? Let's, let's see. Well, we're going to test both out. See, like this dark spot right here I, I think that uh, it almost needs to be covered and when you water it down it might be difficult for you to really 
get that thing to cover. But let's let's go ahead and just keep going with it. You know, light layers might actually still cover it. But I've run into this issue before where I'm like, oh man, that neat that dark spot needs to be covered with a lighter color. And you have to just take your time on this. You know, it is just a process. I'm pulling the tongue up and out, I'm trying to pop it out. Got to remember that somebody's going to be wearing these all the way to the brim, but the section here is notorious for you layering paint after paint after paint layer. So just be careful with that little section there. You might even want to hand paint it. This looks cool, man. This is more like a really creamed out version of a van now. And by the way, if you haven't been noticing, it's this is coming out with absolutely no problem out the airbrush. So I, I I can only imagine how thin, how cool the airbrush paint must be then. If this doesn't this this doesn't even require any real watering down. Alright, so let me go ahead and just I'm gonna just finish off the rest of this and we're gonna coat with orange next. So I'm gonna look for any layers that look like they need a little bit of more love, a little bit of attention. Oh, that's that's it said nope. <laughs> it's done. It's done done. Yeah, see? Hear that sound? It's like stop spraying me, bro. Okay, so maybe I'm I might need to lay another layer out on the tongue. Cause the tongue is uh yeah. The tongue needs attention for sure. Where did you go? Here you go. Let's give it a good mix. The monster packet's got 40, oh wow, 48 colors? Hmm. Webs, um, is it on sale? Let me know if it's on sale. I think that if it's on sale, sale items don't get a discount. And so that might be the, the issue that you're having. All right, so now this is just straight paint, guys. Oh, snap. That was no bueno. Let me get this out the way now. Y'all see what I just did? <laughs> I snapped that super hard. That was me. That was me. My bad. My bad. All right. Cool. I don't want that to get all over my hand because I promise you I do that. All right, let's get that tongue right quick. Pull that guy out and just give it a nice couple of layers here on the top. All right. There we go, that looks good. It's starting to look good. Now I've got to knock out. Well, I guess we could wait on the on that on the GAC 200. We're gonna do these in orange too, the little lace holes. So we could just wait for that. Uh, let me lay a little bit, maybe one more layer here on this guy. And this side here. These are filled in already though, which is kind of nice. I think they were white already, right? Were they white? Where's the other? Then, uh, yeah, they're all white. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's not too difficult to fill white up. But I think we're pretty good to go now. I think I'm going to just uh, unload this airbrush. And let's test out the other color. Getting these edges here, the sock liner and the edges. You guys notice I haven't done anything inside yet. I might just hand paint that inside, that little leather piece there just to get you know a nice clean finish at the end yeah this covered really well man I'm happy the way it's uh sometimes when you use paint what happens is it's too thick and then you can just kind of see it glopping onto the the top of the shoe and we're not in that situation thank god All right, so let's get, let's see. Because I'm gonna end this out, let me just add a little GAC 200. Let's see what we got. Okay, this is gonna be just for the lace holes. And I'm leaving it for the end because you see how I've just, 
just enough paint left over, I might as well just drop some GAC in it. And then we could end um, and go to the next section, which is going to be to paint orange. What is it, an orange? What is it? I forgot what the the color is. It's some tropical sounding color. Where is it? Oh, <laughs> light orange. <laughs> it's not tropical. Some of the names were super tropical. Maybe light orange wasn't one of them. I thought I was going to say like tangerine. All right, let's see. Come on, buddy. You got to co cooperate here when you're live. It's coming out, but it's coming out slow. All right, I think that should be enough. Boy, I'm cuts today. All right, there. Just got this new airbrush pot. I'm like, I'm like a proud, <laughs> proud Tesla owner when I say that. Check out my new airbrush pot that I bought. I needed one, man. I haven't had one for <laughs> probably since I started. Yeah. Oh, no, no, that, that one cracked. I dropped that one. That one cracked. And then uh, I picked up another one, but that one was, that one's here. It's, it's pretty messy. All right, let me just jump into this little. Okay, so we're just doing uh, just the plastic little pieces here, okay? should have done this beforehand, but it's okay, it's still drying. Just dropping that same thing, the adhesion promoter I was telling you about. We're dropping that onto the plastic pieces. Just to make sure that you're getting a nice bond there with the plastic piece. And I feel like this brush is, let's see if it's working. Yeah, it's working, okay. Got to give them like individual attention, you know? Each one of them needs to get the nice little dose. All right, y'all. So this looks good. I think I'm going to uh, dump the rest of this out. Uh, I, I am a little concerned about that little section here, so let's just knock that out real quick and then we'll get into the uh, we'll get in the orange next. Oh YouTube uh, or Twitch was going in and out. That's interesting. Hey, thanks for letting me know, Quan. I don't know why that happens, man. Sometimes uh, the streams are great and they're you know they're all perfect and then the other days, they're they're iffy, you know. So sorry about that, man. All right, just laid a little bit more paint there. All right, I gotta remember not to snap those because when you snap them, you get paint everywhere. And it's really easy to snap them. All right, let's pick that up a little bit. So some of you guys have asked me about like painting suede different colors. Can you paint like a dark suede into like a nice bright color? This is kind of the same process what we're doing today. You got to layer and layer and layer but you got to do it at a light coats otherwise you can see all the flaws. It's almost like an all day process you know. All right, I think we're good now. The reason why I gave it one more sweep through is just because, so you know, there's spots like this that were darker. I could still kind of see. This is your opportunity to get anything done and out of the way. This has to be lighter than the color we're gonna spray next. If it's not, if this still has a stain on it that's darker, this might not be able to cover it 
And so that's why I'm saying this is important, all right? <laughs> I see somebody spraying cologne. That's funny. I don't even know how you did that. That's what's even funnier. <laughs> so anyways, yeah. Let me jump into this next color coat. And man, I kind of like the way they look right now. They kind of look like a... I think they have a, a lemon... Oh yeah, lemon sherbet. Looks kind of like this lemon sherbet. Interesting. Right? Look at lemon sherbet, and then this is what we're using. So it has, you know, a slighter yellow tone to it. All right, let's uh, let's dump this all out. Yeah, shout out to Grex, man. These guys are good people. They ended up sending me. Uh, I broke the back end piece of this thing, and they sent me a piece really quick, man. They're very responsive. What I'm doing, guys, is just kind of dumping out any of this existing paint. I feel like after some time, that paint gets all dried. Right now, we've mixed uh, GAC 900, GAC 2. We mixed a bunch of stuff in here, you know? Let's let's kind of rinse it out. Let's uh, start from scratch. You know, especially because it's like your finalizing coat. So I'm just kind of getting a good rinse out of this thing here. All right, let me move this so y'all can see what I'm doing. See, so I'm just taking most of it out. And I know they say don't use acetone, but it works really, really well. As long as you're not like keeping it in the actual gun, you know, overnight or something. This thing breaks down paint really quickly. All right, cool. All right, so this is the other thing that I really like about this brush. See this cap here? Cap comes off. You can now clean the inside of this with like almost no problem because you're right next to it. A lot easier to clean this. See? So I'm just trying to get the majority of the paint out here. It doesn't need to be a, a perfect clean. I just want it to be clean enough so at least we'll get a good clean coat coming out of the airbrush. And once we once we try putting a little bit of airbrush or acetone in here, we can see and test it. Let's see here. So just by putting it in here, I can tell. See? It went down all the way through with no problem. It was consistent. So this should spray with no problem. I feel like... Now really what I got to just worry about is one thing and that is this vanilla colored stripe here. Okay, I got to try to avoid that as much as possible. So <laughs> I guess we're going to be testing out my airbrush skill today. Speed infusion. Can you check to see if these guys can see the, because it's super bright for me. I don't know if they can see the, the whites or, or the yellow now here. It looks very drowned out. I don't know if you guys could see the detail. Like, for example, like, can you see this whole stripe all going all the way here to the lace hole? Things like that. I'm just asking. I mean, I'm not saying it, it's wrong. I'm just saying I just want to make sure that they could see the detail. Because on the, the whites and light colors, they get drowned out if there's too much light around it. All right, guys. So he's going to... Well, ask him first, yo. Make sure y'all... You guys let him know, man, because he's he's gum he's jumping in there right now and doing it, and then then he takes a nap for like three out three and a half hours. You ain't gonna see this full. All right, I think I, uh, I put a little bit more. Okay, and don't snap it too hard. You told yourself don't snap it too hard. Cool, 
And I'm going to put a little, just a little bit of GAC. Just a little bit of GAC. Let's get it to just, you don't want it to be oversaturated looking like a bunch of paints on there, you know? Let me just make sure that's dry. That's dry. Cool. See, that looks too dark, dude. <laughs> now it's too dark. Can you put it in between the two? All right, y'all, let's do it. So I gotta try to avoid the line. I know I'm not gonna avoid the line completely. It's gonna, I'm gonna have to lay, lay another layer on top of that to finalize it. But what I like about it is it's pretty much done at this point. Um, it's gonna get overspray on it. Um, I could choose to wait and wait for the whole strip to dry and then we can mask it off. I'm too lazy to do that, so we're just gonna jump into it, all right? So let me start on the bottom. I like to start on the bottom because we tend to have a always miss the bottom edge for some reason. Doesn't get the same same love and affection as the rest of the upper. It's a nice color too. It reminds me of like a what is that called? The uh, the creamsicle that are orange. Are they called creamsicles? The other option could have been I could have hand painted this, but quite honestly I could probably paint that strip faster afterwards anyway, so. And when you're doing paneling like this, airbrushing is so easy to do it. I definitely prefer painting panels with an airbrush over any kind of hand painting. See how far away I am from the actual shoe here, about six inches. And that kind of helps prevent me from laying too much paint on just one spot. It gives me an opportunity to let that paint spread wider. Also, what that helps me do is, people ask me all the time, how come my, why is the paint uh, bleeding through the tape? And it's usually because you're laying too much paint in that section. So when you're, when you're layering it like, like, light like this, the paint never has that opportunity to bleed through. trying to stay consistent here with the, the layer so when I go through the whole tongue here I want the whole tongue to be about the same shade when you're done here Now I'm gonna go over, uh, well see, I gotta still go over these guys here and here. Again, I'm gonna wait till the end because we have to put uh, some GAC in there, okay? So let's go ahead and try to get this panel right here. You guys notice how like my hands consistently moving. So you gotta keep that consistent go Otherwise, you're going to layer it too heavy in that one spot. All 
I've got this section right here, and I've got to push it, push it open. That makes sure you get all the little panels there. Again, looking for the bottom here. Any spots that look like they need a little bit of attention, go ahead and do it, of course. You guys notice how I've jumped from like one panel to another panel. You're giving one panel a chance to dry. Then you jump back into the other panels. You know, try to get that nice consistent flow amongst the whole shoe. Again, pushing out here, you see there's a wrinkle here. It's a natural one. You don't want to paint it like that. You want to paint it how it's supposed to look. Again, pushing out. Oh, nick that. Nick that stripe right there. It's all right. Get that edge. There we go. Now let's fill in the body there. Almost done. Just looking for any gaps. Man, well, how long have we been on, man? One hour and 17 minutes? Wow, that's it? Crazy. I feel like I've been working for three hours, yo. Let's move this little team viewer thing here. There we go. Cool. Gotta still wait for it to dry. So I gotta finish up this top panel here, this back heel. I noticed that as I was shooting, the paint wasn't coming out as smooth. So I'm gonna just test and see. I'm gonna just pull this needle back real quick, just a little bit, and just kind of poke in the front. Because when you poke in the front, sometimes there's something that was just jammed there. Okay, it's coming out. Yeah, it's coming out, okay. Just wanna make sure. I don't wanna be wasting my time. Right, just gotta knock this little last section out here.
drop this down. Again, you guys remember this panels here that we gotta kinda open up. Just wait, uh, just wait a minute or two. Let's see how you guys are doing, man. Sorry, I know uh, <laughs> I've been really concentrated on this one, guys, because I got to knock it out. Um, it's slowly coming together. I do know that I still got to work on things like the inside tongue. You guys see all that? So it's probably a good time. Let's catch that up real quick. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect here on the inside tongue, but I, I do like to try to have it catch up. This could be really difficult too because it's like all layered, it's behind other panels. So I try to do the best I can on that and then afterwards I might go back in with a brush and look for any panels that I missed. I'm using my finger here to push out anything I can see. And you can see that it's very inconsistent here. So same thing here guys, I'm going to look to avoid hitting the lace holes, those plastic pieces, and just trying to hit around them. So that's a good first layer. looking for any spots that look like they need filling in. So it looks pretty good so far guys. I do need to kind of take a break here now because I don't want to spray too much paint all at one time. Okay, uh, If you spray too much it's going to just get this very uh, bunched up paint feeling. Uh, it's going to be wet and it's going to not feel like it's going to dry because the GAC is, um, it's kind of sticky. It has this weird sticky and wet feeling to it. Um, so you don't want to overdo the layers at a time. Usually I'll take a break here and give, even just put in front of some air 
So then that way um, it has some ample time to cure. See, I missed a little spot there. It was just on the bottom sole. It's not a big deal. But anyhow, um, let me just go ahead and knock out this side here. I see there's a lot of spots I missed. So I'll be pushing them out. When you're painting these panels, guys, make sure your hands are clean because right now there's, it's, it's this very sticky stage that the GAC causes, the uh, GAC 900. So if you've got like, a, you know, for example, paint on your fingers, grease, dirt, anything like that, it'll catch real quick on these panels. I think I'm pretty much done. Just looking for any last, last bit of details. Again, I want to make sure all the panels look consistently coated. It should be about the right, same, same look, same feel, same look of a stage. It should all look like it's a consistent. consistent flow I think we're pretty much there I think this last part here I to just finish up and then for today I think we're gonna just let this dry out Uh, went from white to this <laughs> grill crew what's going on homie how you living everything good did you just jump on dude I think we're just about to finish up it's probably late over there huh So for those of you asking, can you paint Alpha Flex or Alpha Paints through an airbrush? I think we got our answer today. Yeah, you definitely can. I think now what I'm going to have to do is let this guy uh, just settle out a little bit. I'll give it, you know, 15 minutes or so. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll hit it with the heat gun and let the um, that wet tacky feel that I'm telling you guys about, it'll start to absorb and dry out and really seep into the the fabric and get the softness back at the same time. Um, what we'll do is we'll continue this. Hopefully I can continue tomorrow, if not maybe Wednesday. Uh, but I do want to finish this and show you guys what the final product looks like. Um, what else can I say? I mean, uh, I guess I'm, we're opening to questions would probably be good right now. Uh, I will lay out probably another layer off camera uh, on, on the lace holes and, and add a little bit of GAC 200 as well. So you know that I'm still continuing that process, okay? We have any questions, guys? I'm gonna just scroll up real quick. I don't know if I missed your guys' questions, but if I did, my bad, yo. Um, G, uh, gay Nady, Gay Lovekin. <laughs> yeah, thank you so so much for subscribing, homie. I hope they add it on the phone. Okay, feel good that I mixed it, made it pretty well. Don't mess with the damn settings, bro. I swear to God, I'm not messing with the settings. Oh, I swear to God, I put that on everything. Why would I mess with the settings? I swear, bro. <laughs> Customs by Kevson to heal versus speed infusion. Let's go. I'm definitely down for that. Probably nobody would pay for that. <laughs> In Twitch PC app, you can send. A oh, gotcha. Okay, cool. So that's what those GIS were, the gifts were. I was like sitting here, like, how are people sending gifts? Who is that that just sent a gift? Can I, can, is that, is there any way for me to tell? That was probably you, huh? Speed Infusion. Oh, nice. That sounds sick. Marbling the panels for uh, either a bread toe or a black toe. Sounds dope. Oh, it's only two over there. That's right. You guys are like all the way across the other way. 
So, um, yeah, man, uh, this was an all-white shoe. We're trying to get this to become almost like an orange sherbet color. And we're testing out Alpha Flex paint. So, um, those of you who just joined or, you know, probably going to join or probably see the this restream or whatever, let me just send you guys again. This is the paint company there. I just put in the chats. That's under Alpha 6 Corporation. And let me just give you the discount code that they gave me as well. Um, you guys can use a discount code feel good. I think that uh, one of the members actually it was Quan who was having some issues uh, with his discount code. Um, I tried it and my discount code works so I, I'm not sure maybe we got to reach out to Alpha 6 and see what's going on. But yeah I mean the paint is it's awesome so far I've used it now for both hand painting and for airbrushing and um, I have no complaints man I'm really excited to see what else they got. Uh, I do know that they also have, um, what is it called? The color changing paints, the chameleons. Some people call it a mermaid paint because it kind of shimmers into that, you know, deep purples and deep blues and deep greens. Beautiful, elegant colors, you know? But yeah, anyways, uh, let's see, time is 9.04, guys. Um, thank you so much for being on. I know a lot of you guys are on late today, man, and I apologize for jumping on late. Um, Speed Infusion and I were talking about trying to set an actual day for a schedule. I'm thinking it may be Wednesdays. Tuesdays or Wednesdays. One of those two days I think will be good because Mondays is just coming off of the weekend and doing all the orders and trying to get stuff out is, is, is a little difficult to do. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you guys prefer or if you guys prefer a day where you want me to stream because I feel like if we're more consistent then people will be on you, you guys will know um, you know eating dinner or whatever and then afterwards you guys can come chill or whatever you know so either way I'm I'm appreciative of all your guys' feedback man I, I thank you guys so much for the support um, you know we do work off of tips so if you guys have a little bit uh, extra to, to uh, give we really appreciate it um, Facebook, we just added you guys um, now onto the Facebook business page. So now you guys could see us on Facebook. Um, I know we're having some issues with Twitch. Not exactly sure why. Uh, but we are using this um, app called Restream. And that, that kind of just streams to every channel. And I think that might be uh, one of the issues. You know what I mean? Um, shout out to Webs Custom Kicks. Top donator still at $130. Uh, shout out to everybody who's donated. Shout out to people who liked, commented, have subscribed. Sneaky Reeky Customs, 25 bucks. The Die Lab, thank you so much. Webs Custom Kicks, that's our. This is our last top 10 donators uh, that have helped support the stream and, and keep us going. Um, thank you for cheering bits, Speed Infusion. Thank you for reminding me. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really happy to help teach you guys uh, what we can. And there's always some kind of an issue that. That we come about where we need a little bit of extra dough to keep, you know, the stream going. Uh, this week was lighting. <laughs> uh, but I think we got the lighting back up and uh, everything is good to go. Um, the microphone, you know, all these things you've donated to us. Thank you for that, man. Um, it just keeps us going. I appreciate you guys. Lastly, Patreon family, man. Thank you guys so much. You guys are like my biggest fans and my biggest supporters. And, um, you know, I really can't thank you more. Uh, I promise you guys we got some more stuff coming up. Uh, actually, part two of how to put fabrics onto your Air Force Ones and other shoes. Um, it's all done. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. Alex surprised me and said he finished it up in one week. Usually it takes us about two weeks to edit. So um, there's only three different parts to it. I know you guys have seen part one. Uh, it's part two is just as good, I think. And then part three, you guys can actually figure out exactly what to do. And hopefully you guys can start doing reconstruction stuff and making money off of it, uh, which is ideal. You know, that's that's why we did the Patreon channel for you guys. So, um, oh, there it goes. Patreon.com slash feelgoodthreads if you guys would like to join. Um, oh, giveaway. Um, I ordered these paints. I almost forgot to tell you guys. The Alpha paints uh, that I'm using today, the Alpha Flex, for the people who are in the giveaway tier of the Patreon uh, channel. We are going to be giving up a, a whole bundle of this Alpha Flex paint. Man, it's a pretty big bundle, actually. So I think you guys will be happy. And you guys could try it for yourself firsthand, you know. It's awesome that um, we have an opportunity to try something new out. And I think you guys will be super happy with uh, the results. So 
Um, I swear to God, if this fool talks about the webcam anymore, God, he talks about the webcam anymore, I'm going to just fly to Texas. And... All right, y'all. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, being on. I think that uh, we'll be on again this week. I'll show you guys the end results, and then we'll compare them to the other shoe. Uh, with that said, my name is Suhil with Feel Good Threads. Love you guys. I'm out of here. Peace.